This is a thrift store. It is filled with all sorts of things that most people don't want, both on the aisle and wandering between them. In this series, I will find specific items from these stores that, although worthless to many, have value to some. The same way an archaeologist sifts through the decaying remains and detritus of civilization's past, we will examine both the physical and contextual reasons that exhibit how one man's trash can truly be another's treasure. Today we will talk about Nathaniel Benchley's The Visitors, a book you can purchase at any thrift store for a dollar or less and sell, depending on condition and edition, for fifty to one hundred dollars, sometimes more. Nathaniel Benchley was born in Newton, Massachusetts to a literary family. He was the son of Robert Benchley, a noted American writer, humorist, critic, and actor. The creation of media was written into his bones and passed on to his children, most notably Peter, who went on to write the novel Jaws. Yes, that same one. After serving in World War II, Nathaniel Benchley became a writer, and as a writer, possibly from the platform which the success of his father built, his novels were often adapted into popular movies. From 1960 until 1982, Benchley wrote 16 novels, and out of those 16 novels, at least five of them were adapted for storytelling on the screen. 1950's Side Street, 1960's Sail a Crooked Ship, 1961 The Off Islanders, 1968's Welcome to Xanadu, and finally, 1965's The Visitors. Papa wants a vacation. Mama wants a vacation. Their teenage son wants a vacation. Hold yourself. Hold yourself. Watch. You all right? Yeah, fine. Fine. What were you doing out there? The Visitors was adapted into a comedic movie called The Spirit is Willing. According to IMDb and several other reviews, it was not very good. It wasn't terrible, but it should be noted that no one is claiming it to be some work of cinematic mastery. Directed by renowned B-movie mogul William Castle, this was his third to last film he created. In his life, Castle had directed dozens of movies and acted or produced dozens more. Castle was an inspiration for some of the most influential directors of our time, including Alfred Hitchcock, who decided to make Psycho only after seeing the success of Castle's B-movies in the 1950s, and filmmaker John Waters, who went as far to say that Castle was God and portraying him in an episode of the FX program feud. I, I always like Captain Hook and Peter Pan. I like the Wicked Witch and Snow in Snow White and the Wizard of Oz. So I always like the evil characters. And, and he was a ham bone, certainly. But he was a movie director. That's the thing I think that very much appealed to me. I certainly, when I was a kid, didn't say I want to be a movie director when I grew up. But I was a puppeteer. And um, I gave puppet shows all the time. And he influenced that part of my career very, very negatively. Because I would try to put these these gimmicks in the puppet shows and they didn't work and the parents would just look at me like I was insane. John Goodman also lent his talents to creating a portrayal of the famed director in 1993's Matinee. Robert Zemeckis stated that Castle was his favorite director and co-founded Dark Castle Productions, a company whose first two films were recreations of Castle's earlier works, them being The House on Haunted Hill and Thirteen Ghosts. Notions of specters were prevalent in Castle's works, so an adaption of Nathaniel Benchley's novel The Visitors about a haunted house in New England and the humorous situations it put a small nuclear family through must have been an obvious fit. I think that's why so many people want this book. 
Not because the book is particularly good or because the film it inspired is notable in some artistic way, but because of the context in which both the author and his works existed. Benchley was the patriarch of a generation within a literary dynasty, bookended by both a notable father and a notable son. And the movie, although not infused with regal pedigree, harkens back to a day of simpler times, when a movie didn't need to subvert the expectations of an audience or cost some astronomical amount to be considered enjoyable. That's what I've gathered from reading the reviews of consumers on the Amazon page of the DVD and in posts written about the book. It wasn't something that was perfect, but maybe through the lens of nostalgia, it represented a perfect time. Of course, someone who grew up watching B-movies of the 50s and 60s is willing to spend 50 or $100 on a relic from their past. Of course they want to remember the halcyon days of their untroubled youth, now almost 60 years later in the waning years of their life. The film's title, The Spirit is Strong, is biblical. It comes from the book of Matthew. It has to do with the way one's body betrays them despite a dedicated belief in a cause. It is fitting, then, that this book has now become rare, not for the words on the page, its literary flesh, but because of the spirit and the spirit of those who remembered it fondly.